So my name is Sammy Cake and welcome to Flagness Day. And today we will be talking about E3 2017. So there are so many games I want to talk about on this. I made like a list throughout watching E3, all the conferences, just so I can get an idea of what to talk about. And the list is so long. It's got like 20 games on there. It's just ridiculous. So I've got to speed through this as much as I can. And to get started, I want to talk about the EA conference which started it all for E3 2017. Um, only one game in particular stuck out for me for this because they did talk about a lot of EA Sports which for me doesn't really concern me. I'm not really into EA Sports so it wasn't really my type of soup. Did I say that right? But for one game that did the stand out to me was a game called A Way Out. It's from the same developers of Brothers A Tale of Two Sons and that game in itself was amazing. So I have high expectations for this game. It's a split screen co-op game. You can play local or you can play online with your friends. And it just seemed perfect. And the only thing I've got to criticise is that there's no single player at all for this. So you have to play with someone which might be a bit difficult for someone like me who doesn't really have any friends to play with because <laughs> I really want to play this with Phil and I would love to make a video playing this with Phil but unfortunately Phil is a bit camera shy so I don't think that'd be possible but when I saw this you would never have guessed this was made from people who made Brothers because this is completely different the whole style of it is completely different and I really love it it just works and I, I really can't wait for this, I just can't wait to see how this game is going to turn out and to see the future of it and see like other YouTubers and streamers play this game because I think it's going to be amazing. I really do think it's going to be so outstanding. But that's the only game I really want to talk about from the EA conference. There was another thing that they told us about which was uh, EA Origin Access. It's going to be free for a week. So if you do this Origin Access, you can play stuff like Dragon Age Inquisition, you can play this War of Might, and you can play Unravel free for a week. And that sounds amazing. I'm going to make four years of that and I'm going to record videos on some of these games because it's just going to be amazing to do so. So, that's really good of you, EA. Thank you. Next up is the Microsoft conference, or the Xbox conference, whatever you prefer to say. Um, I don't know if I should talk about this game now, or if I should talk it in a different one, but I'm just going to talk about it now because this is where we first saw it. And that's the Assassin's Creed Origins game. Um, they took a break from Assassin's Creed last year, which was a good move, I think, from Ubisoft because they just they just overwhelm you with Assassin's Creed games, and I just don't feel like I like it very much. But this new Assassin's Creed game has quite a bit of RPG elements to it. You level up, you can get your stats, and yes, <laughs> I'm not very good at explaining these sort of things. <laughs> But it also seemed like it's more open world. There's not many buildings as such compared to the previous Assassin's Creed games. It's a lot of nature, wildlife, and it looked really interesting. I can't wait to see how this is actually going to turn out, and I just hope it isn't as glitchy as previous titles such as Unity and Black Flag. This next game I'm going to talk about was probably the most exciting game for me that they announced during the Microsoft conference, which was Life is Strange 2. It looks amazing. You play as Chloe this time rather than Max. Max isn't in this game, but instead it's Chloe and Rachel Amber. Oh, that just sounds absolutely amazing. And I really cannot wait for this game to be released. It's just going to be mind-blowing. I can already see it. It's going to be mind-blowing. So I'm super looking forward to Life is Strange 2 because it's just going to be amazing. And it's coming out later this year, which is just the cherry on top. I can't wait to play as a badass known as Chloe. <laughs> Next up, Shadow of War. I mean, what can I say? That game looked really cool. I mean, I thought the animation was a bit iffy at times, but yeah, it is so early game footage, so it could be improved in the near future when the game is actually fully released. 
But from what I saw in Shadow of War, it did look so cool. It looks ridiculously awesome. And honestly, I never played Shadow of Mordor, and I really wish I did. I do own it, but I just never played it. And I need to play it before this game comes out. I really do, because Shadow Mordor does look amazing in itself, and if it just follows that at all, I think this game is going to be an absolute winner because it does look so cool. Next up, Microsoft announced Anthem. And at first I was a bit iffy about this because in EA they did like do a little sneak preview of this and I was like, oh, that's so annoying. Why won't I do this? But then after watching the gameplay footage of Anthem, I did start to like it a little bit more. It reminded me of Destiny, but instead you know, like this horizon world. And just having those two together, the sound is so awesome. And it looked like from the footage we've shown, the eco suits or javelins that they called it in game, they can be really heavily customised. Like there was one person who had like a mortar on his uh, javelin. I don't like calling it that to be honest. <laughs> it sounds stupid, so I'm gonna throw it. No. <laughs> but it just seems really cool of the customization you could put into the javelins and the environment in itself looked amazing. I mean, it's like a massive open world when it showed it. And I really just wonder how much of that we can explore just freely with our friends. It just looks so cool. So I am looking forward to Anthem. I think that's gonna be a really awesome game. I just hope it lives up to the expectations. I really do hope so. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is the Bethesda's conference. I know some people was a bit iffy about this, so they didn't think it was that great, but I actually really enjoyed it myself. Um, to start off with was VR Fallout. And I can understand why people might be a bit iffy about that. I mean, you're paying for a game that you already have pretty much, just to play it in VR. And that just sounds super annoying. I'm sorry for anyone who ends up doing that because I think that's ridiculous. I mean, I know they had to make money somehow, but to pay for the full price of a game just for having it in VR? No. Just no. So, I'm not a fan of that, but the whole of having VR Fallout just sounds so cool. And I'm really looking forward to that. I think that's going to be really awesome to play. They also announced a Doom VR, and that in itself also looked so cool. I mean, I just love shooting and badass enemies and just feel like a badass in general in Doom. And you could do that in first person in VR. That sounds so cool. Another little thing they announced was Skyrim Switch Edition. And I mean, it's not really much of an announcement. We knew it was coming. But I just thought I should talk about it a little bit because I thought it was really awesome how you can use an amiibo to get Link's outfit from Breath of the Wild and his Master Sword and Shield in game on Skyrim just from using an amiibo. But not only that, this bit was just amazing. Using the Joy-Cons to fight. I mean, you can press A or whatever to hit if you really want to, but you can also hit by swinging the Joy-Cons and just doing that and it looks so awesome and it's sure like using a bow and that looks so cool. I do wonder how magic's gonna work for it because if it's like, wow, first what <laughs> That was such a bad impression. <laughs> but either way, that sounds amazing and I'm really looking forward to having it. I mean, I think I'm gonna get it. I don't know yet. <sighs> I just don't know if I should buy Skyrim again just to replay it all over again despite I've already completed it before just so I can play it on the Switch. I just don't know. I do like the idea of having it portable though. It just sounds amazing. I'm really tempted. Last thing I want to talk about from the Bethesda's conference is for Evil Within 2. I mean, this is just going to be a massive psychological adventure. Just like the first one. And I can't wait for it. I mean, I didn't play the first one, but I watched Markiplier play it. And it was so, like, I don't know. So confusing, but it just really makes you think, and it's just like, what? I just really loved it. So, Evil Within 2, I think I'm going to equally love. The trailer in itself was so, like, what? And confusing. And I 
just love that. I think it's gonna be so cool. So yes, that's all I want to talk about from the Bethesda's conference. Now I'm gonna move on to the PC gaming conference. I mean, I know not many people probably watched this one because this one seems a bit more low key. This is a bit sad. But there was a few games from this that I thought was pretty cool and I really liked the look of. To begin, I want to talk about a game called Ooblet. This is just like a happy, cheerful game. It's like Animal Crossing, but Stardew Valley. But it's just a, just a mix of the two. And I thought it was like, what? I really love the look of it. It just seems so happy, uplifting. And I really want to play it. I can't wait for this to be released because I'm just going to buy it straight away. The style of our style is just it's so cute. Oh. And just for the characters, that's how you can customize them. It's just, oh my god. I just loved the look of this game so much and I can't wait for it to be released. The next game I want to talk about from the PC gaming conference is a game called Tunic. In this game you play as this like, little cute fox. But you fight these massive enemies and I don't know but I, I just got a Dark Souls feel on this because the way you dodge the enemies move I just thought it was so cool and this is a cute simple game but it also looked like it was quite challenging and I liked that I thought it was really cool I thought it was a cool idea and I'm, I'm looking forward to that as well I mean I, just, I know it's probably not everyone's cup of tea but I thought it looked really good Next game I want to talk about is Sea of Thieves. I mean, this was also announced at Microsoft conference, but I don't know any fan like talking about it after seeing it in the PC gaming conference. I don't know why, but I just liked how it looked. I mean, I'm not really good with playing with other people, so that in itself really puts me off it. But just the idea of having a ship and then just going to these islands and then plunder. Wow! And then I've seen all these dungeons and then just explore the dungeons. It just seemed really cool and unique. And there was this other game that Ubisoft announced called Skull and Bones. It was kind of the same as Sea of Thieves, but more realistic looking. And I gotta admit, I would rather get Sea of Thieves over that because with Skull and Bones, there wasn't much exploration, it was mainly on the ship stuff. You don't go out and walk around. But on Sea of Thieves, you do. And I really like that. It's just sharing an adventure with your friends. And it looks so neat. So, I kind of want to get that, but I'm still a bit iffy on it. So, I don't know yet. <laughs> Next game I want to talk about is a game called Islands. Although... It's about Wylands, but in the conference I kept seeing Islands. I was a bit confused about that. But it's like a Minecraft game, but not with cubes. It's had more polygons on it. <laughs> I'm only going to talk about this a little bit because it did catch my eye, but I don't think I'll actually buy it. But it did look kind of cool, just how you can customise the world. And even like customise your character. That sounds cool. But just like customise, explore and make your own stuff. And from the gameplay footage they showed, it didn't look a bit fun. It didn't look like it just messed around, and I like that. I don't know. It was a weird looking game, but it looked pretty neat at the same time. So, I just thought I should get it out there. <laughs> the next game I want to talk about is from the creators of Don't Starve, and it's called Grifflands. It was in like the same style of Don't Starve, so it was that 2D paper pop out style. I don't know what to call it <laughs> but it was really cool because you go to like different towns and you can talk to people and you can do different choices you can be evil by stealing you can be good you can like negotiate with people and then uh, cheat apparently and explore and uh, like I feel there's a um, trailer for it they had these like words pop out and it's just saying all these things you could do in the game and it sounded really interesting because it really sounded like you can make fairer choices into what you do and to what your actions you're going to do in this game and I really like the idea of that I mean I know that sort of thing isn't that new because I know like in Fable you can be good or evil but I feel like there was a lot more depth to it in this game I mean I don't know for sure until it's fully released but it did look really cool
cool and I did like the look of it and also like partying up with other people in it I think in the footage like someone was sent to prison and then we had to like bribe them out to get out of the prison and that just seemed really cool like it's just different choices you play it in a different way so everyone has their own different story to tell when they play the game they all have their own experiences of the game and I thought it was really neat. So I want to keep my eye out on that game because I think that's going to be really good. Last game I want to talk about that was spoken in the PC conference is a game called Raw Groove. And it's look a bit like Fire Emblem or Advanced Wars, I heard people say. And it's made by the same people who made Starbound and Stardew Valley. So that in itself makes it sound really awesome. So that's why I'm intrigued by this game. I mean, I'm not too keen on that strategy type games. I mean, I did love Fire Emblem, but I mainly love Fire Emblem for the characters rather than for actual gameplay. And I don't know if I'm gonna get the same feeling from Wargroove, but I really hope so. And also another thing with Wargroove is that there's multiplayer. So you can go against other people in a strategy game, in a turn-based strategy game, yes. And not only that, you can customize the map so you can make your own map and play in that map. And I thought it was really neat to have that sort of customization to it. So, I'm keeping an eye out for that game as well. Okay, these next two games wasn't actually in the conference. I saw it in like the Twitch bit in the middle. Uh, first one I'll talk about is a game called Fortnite. I got an Ultima style feel from this, but instead of orcs, it was zombies. But another thing about this game is that it's in like an open world environment. You're not doing levels, you're doing like a whole open world. And it seems so cool. There's like how you can build your own base and just gather materials to protect your base and to stop these zombies from coming by having traps everywhere. And it looks so awesome. Like, I mean, I'm showing the trailer at the moment and you can just see just how cool it can look. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that, especially since it's like multiplayer as well, so you can play with your friends. Like, another thing with Ultimate Style I like is playing with other people, well, doing for co-op boy on Ultimate Style too. And I think it's going to be cool. I think it's going to be really good, this game. Another game is for Sword of Ditto. I mean, this just reminds me of Rogue Legacy, but I just thought I should point that out because it did look really cute and neat and cute. Yeah, I like cute stuff. But, and also it's got the word Ditto in it. I mean, that sounds cool. I like Ditto. <laughs> I don't really know much about this game, but I just thought I should put it in here because it did look so cute. Okay, next conference to talk about is the Ubisoft one. They started this off talking about Mario plus Rabbids combined game. <sighs> this game is exclusive to the Switch and it was a unique way of taking it for a Mario game. Well, I know it's part Mario, but I thought it was like a unique way to do it for a Mario game. It's just different. Once again, it's like a strategy, turn-based game. But it seems a lot more than that. Like, it seems like it's quite complex. But in a good way. Like, I, I can't explain it. Like, you like, throw someone and then you jump and then you hit them and then throw and then shoot and then bam and then what? I don't know, it was just crazy and awesome looking and I think that is going to be amazing to play. I mean especially with rabbits because they're so quirky and I love quirky. I mean, it just seems weird and I just love it so much. So yeah, I think I might end up getting this game maybe. We'll see. <laughs> I hope there's like a demo coming out for it because I know for Switch there's demos sometimes so. That'd be really cool. Another game they announced was The Crew 2. The trailer for this, the transitions, I just fell in love with it because it was just so awesome how they did the transitions. Like, it's just like planes of the sky and then you see mountains all of a sudden and then it's just like on the side of a cliff that's driving and then no, it's not on the side. And it was crazy, but it was so cool. It was so clever. And that in itself was me think, oh my god, I like this. I love this. <laughs> one thing with the first crew, I didn't actually play it. But one thing that put me off wanting to play it is that you are just restricted in cars. And 
then I think Clue 2 is going to be the same. You're just going to be restricted in cars. And I know that does make sense because it is a car game. Well, a motorsport driving game with planes and boats as well. But I don't know. I just feel like in a world like that, you would want to be walking around as well. You don't want to have that restriction of just staying in a car. If you want to like explore the area in a big open world, you want to get out of a car sometimes, not just stay in the car. Although the most interesting thing for this game, for me, was planes. I mean, just seeing how they just swerve in and out of the city buildings, going through the holes in the bridge or whatnot, and ah. Uh, it looks so cool, just flying around. And it looked like you can go really high up as well. I loved it. I really did love that trailer. It was so cool. So, I don't know if I'm going to get it. I really don't. But we'll see. We'll see. I want to see a bit more gameplay on it first, to be honest. This next game is what a lot of people have been looking forward to. And I have been looking forward to a hell of a lot as well. Whew. South Park, the Fractured. Bed hold. Yeah. To be fair, from this trailer, we weren't really shown anything new. I mean, yeah, of course, it was new footage, but it's a South Park game. It was funny, it was weird, and it's just making us think, what? <laughs> but it's something I love about South Park, and the first game that they released, oh my god, that was so amazing. It's just funny, it's quirky, it has everything. It's just funny. Funny, that's what you need to say, funny. It's, oh, I loved it. Despite it really made me cringe at times. Ugh. But I do hope this new game makes me feel cringy again. Because if it didn't, it just feels like it's losing something. It's losing its charm. But I really think this new South Park game is just going to be perfect. I really can't wait for it. It's going to be amazing. So... I'm really looking forward to that. Oh, but that wasn't the only South Park thing they announced. Oh, no, 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 no. They also announced South Park Phone Destroyer. So basically, it's South Park game on a phone. I mean, yes, just yes. I'm really looking forward to that. And that, that is just going to be so cool. Just playing South Park on the go. It just sounds amazing. I just hope it's going to be funny still because I just feel like for the phone games they might end up having to restrict it a little bit more so I don't know if it's still going to be like voice acting or funniness or actually gameplay because I'm really like for this mobile game it's just going to be really like samey and not much of a story you're just going to keep doing the same thing over and over again and it's something that most mobile games do, but I just don't think it will work out if South Park did that too. But we'll see, because it might be alright. Maybe. We'll see. And then there was also Far Cry 5. I mean, that looks so cool. Just how you can like tell a person to go up for thing and then just snipe everyone. That was so awesome. And then he's just like whistle for the dog to come like, here boy, come here! Come bite this person's sausage off. <laughs> that was so cool. And I really do like the look of that. I mean, it is Far Cry. It's not going to be much different compared to the old Far Cry games, but it still looks so cool. And I'm looking forward to it. I'm really looking forward to that. Although the highlight from the Ubisoft conference, maybe for a lot of people, is Beyond Good and Evil 2. That looks so good. I mean, I've not played the first one. So, I'm a bit fresh on it, I'm a bit new when it comes to Beyond Gun Soul. But I have heard a lot about the first one, and I, it's something I've always wanted to play. And the second one, it looks so cool from that cinematic trailer. I mean, it's just quirky, funny, and I just love those sort of things. You probably know I love those sort of things. But I just think it was so cool looking. So, I'm really looking for that to finally be out. And I think that's going to be a real big success. But that's it for the Ubisoft conference. Let's talk about the Sony conference. Okay, for the Sony conference, it was a bit disappointing as a whole, I thought. Because they didn't miss out some games that they 
should have spoke about, such as The Last of Us Part 2, Nino Kuni 2, uh, Final Fantasy 7 Remake. We didn't hear any of, any of them, and Red Dead Redemption 2, it was nowhere. But we did get some Days Gone news, for example, and that was cool. Because I found like from the first trailer we saw, it was very zombie based. But from this new trailer we found out that it's quite bandit space. Like someone got kidnapped and we had to save them. And my favourite way of how we managed to do this was to lure loads of zombies over to their camp. It looks so awesome when that happened. And despite it's very frightful, I really do like that about Days Gone, it's just how many zombies there are. It's just like a horde of them just rushing over to you and it's like, what? And I just think that's so cool. I really like that for this game. And you know, thinking about it, the AI for it, like the other people fighting against these zombies running away from them. It's really clever. And I think this game is going to be a massive hit. I really do. It just looks amazing. I'm not usually a fan of zombie games, but... I'm tempted. I'm really am tempted, especially since you can ride a bike. What? <laughs> we did get one surprise from a Sony conference, which was a Shadow of Colossus remake. Oh, so good. I mean, I have played a little bit of the first one, but I played the PS3 remake of it, and I really wanted to complete it, but I never got around to doing it. Shame. But it looks so cool. It looks so damn awesome. The scene and everything in HD like that. I'm so glad they are remaking it again. I mean, I was not expecting it to happen because they already remade it once before. So making it a third time again. It just seemed weird, but they're doing it. And it looks so good. So I'm really looking forward to that. Another exciting game they spoke about was God of War. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. That game looks so awesome. The fighting, oh, the gore, the gore, the gore! There's so much of it, and you just kill things, obliterate them, and it looks so awesome, and I need this game in my life, because I wanna kill things like that, because it looks awesome. <laughs> That's the only reason I want this game because it looks so awesome just killing things. Oh my god. Next game I want to talk about is Detroit. That looks cool. I mean, I just love the amount of choices you can make and I'm really curious of how much of an impact that's going to do to the whole game. Because with choice games, usually it's quite linear still. But this game feels like it just branches out a lot more compared to other story based games like that such as Heavy Rain or Beyond Two Souls. I just really do hope it is just like that. I really do hope it's just a massive branch out and that each time you play it, it is completely different and not just slightly different at the end of the day. So I am really looking forward to Detroit and I think another good thing about it is seeing other people's experience with the game seeing how they played it and how they ended it seeing what choices they made so that's gonna be interesting and last but not least destiny 2 i mean i did find this a bit funny when they showed us off because it was like oh get the best experience from playing on the ps4 but we know that's not gonna be true because it's coming out on pc I would just use a mouse and a keyboard any day and then also you can have better specs, better graphics for it if you play it on PC, if you have a good PC. So yeah, that kind of lied. But nevertheless, it still looked really awesome. I'm really looking forward to Destiny 2. I didn't play the first one, I watched Phil play it a little bit but it just wasn't my cup of tea but this new one. I think I'm gonna like it a little bit more, especially since it's out on PC. And now, I want to talk about the Nintendo conference. This conference was really short compared to the others, but I, there's so much I want to talk about that happened in this conference. To start off with, Xenoblade 2. What the fuck was that sound? 
This looks so good. I mean, I absolutely love the first Xenoblade game. It's just such a wide, open world. And it looks amazing. So, so good. And for this new Xenoblade game, Xenoblade 2, the character models, they seem so much more refined. They seem so much, I don't know how to explain it, just sharper. And I really like that. So I think it's going to be really good. The only thing I've got to criticise is the voice acting. It, it was a bit disappointing for voice acting. <laughs> but other than that, everything else looks amazing. And I cannot wait for this game to come out. Especially since you play as another character doing their story. Because when Blade X came out, you made your own character. You just customised your character. And it just felt a bit empty because you play the story but you don't really have much of a say with it because your character didn't speak and I don't know I didn't really like Xenoblade X that much but Xenoblade 2 yes 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 it looks so good and I really can't wait and I can't wait to see this how big the world is because Xenoblade games they make such big worlds and I love it I just love it they also did a little snippet announcing a whole new game, Metroid Prime 4. It's been so long and I can't wait. I mean, oh my god. This game is going to be a massive hit. I already can see it and I know everyone is going to love it. So, it's just going to be so good. I, I, I don't really have anything to say about it because nothing much is shown about it. But I just know it's going to be so good. So I'm going to move on to the next game which is Fire Emblem Warriors. I mean we was already announced this last E3 I believe. And back then it looked so good. And now it just looks even better. <laughs> it looks so cool. For Fire Emblem Warriors I did see uh, Treehouse Live a little bit afterwards. And it showed a bit of the gameplay of this. And it looks so awesome. It looks so sleek for UI. And I really love the UI for this game. I really do. So, that has a massive thumbs up. And also because I absolutely loved Hyrule Warriors, I know I'm just gonna love this game. So, I'm really looking forward to this. It's gonna be amazing. So, I can't wait for this to come out. And it said it was coming out in fall, didn't it? Or was it holidays? I don't know, but it's coming out this year and I'm so excited. Ah! This is probably what you've all been waiting for, well, for my reaction if you know me. Zelda Breath of the Wild DLC. I mean, to be fair, we knew what the first DLC was going to be all about, pretty much, but we haven't really seen any footage of it. Um, it's good to actually have some footage and a release date. Heads up, I'm going to be live streaming me playing Breath of the Wild on the 30th of June when it comes out. And I'm going to be doing um, Master Mode. I think that's what they called it, wasn't it? Unless you want to see me do the Trial of the Swords, I might do that as well. Do tell me. <laughs> but I'm definitely going to be live streaming some Zelda Breath of the Wild on June 30th for the DLC. Because I'm so hyped up for this. It's going to be amazing. I, love, I just love Breath of the Wild. It's such an amazing game. And I have a DLC to just pretty much experience the game further. It's just, I can't wait. I really just cannot wait. And they did like a little, I don't know what it was. It was just like a little preview of a second pack DLC. I don't know what to make of it. I'm still really like thinking what it could be. I mean, we know it's going to be about the heroes, four heroes. But we don't really know what. We also know it's going to be something about Cass because he was like playing on his thing. <laughs> so I don't know. It's really intriguing. I'm really looking forward to that though. It's going to be so awesome. So I can't wait. I'm going to announce some amiibos. I really want that, especially Mifa. I want a Mifa amiibo. Please! <laughs> Okay, now this is going to be the final game I'm going to be talking about from E3, which is Mario Party Ados Adossi? Adossi? I can never say it. I got admit last year in E3 when they announced this, I was a bit sceptical. I was like, what? Mario? In a world? 
with like life size real people this is just weird I don't like it I don't like it but after that trailer I gotta admit I do like it quite a bit more I think it does look a lot better I like how you use a hat to take control of things I think that's so neat and awesome and I think it's cool I do I must actually change my mind for it and I I, I really want it now. I do really want it. I think it's going to be so much fun. Because one of the selling points for me is that it's just a big open world. And there's going to be secrets hidden everywhere. And you have to really explore to get the secrets. And it's not like levels. It's just a big open world. Well, not that open. I don't know. It's not like an open world. But yeah, I can't explain it very well. But it's just not like levels. Like you go on like a overworld bits and you pick a level instead you just seem like you join a big map and you just explore and sometimes it might be a little size little mission thing but then it's just like a little one and then you go to another big map and do the same thing and I don't know it just looks really cool so I'm really looking forward to that I think that's gonna be really awesome to play so yeah I think that's so cool I know for that whole of this, I pretty much just said, awesome, cool, woo! I'm not very good at describing things at all. But nevertheless, I really do hope you enjoyed my reactions, or I don't know what to call it, my thoughts on E3 this year. I know I didn't talk about every game, but I don't know. These are like games I thought I should mention that I saw. Yeah. But yeah, um, I don't think I'm going to do occasions for this week because... It's just a long video, so I'm just not going to bother with occasions. And I think I'm just going to leave this video here now because otherwise it's just going to be going on for way too long. Don't worry about occasions. If you do have occasions, you just have that case in the comments below, and I will answer them last week. But I also will answer this week's occasions next week as well. So yeah, look forward to that. But I'm going to leave this video here of Vlogmas Day. I'm sorry it's a bit different. I wouldn't say shorter, but I'm pretty much less on one, one topic, which was E3. It's just dragged on for way too long, so I still hope you enjoyed it. But anyway, I'm going to leave this video here for Vlogmas Day. I really do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a like, comment, subscribe. All of it is so greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. For the social videos down below, right there. And that's it for the video of Vlogmas Day. Hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you have a cake-tastic day. Bye-bye!